Sri Vishnu Sahasranama, name 983, Anam, uh, the main thrust of the discussion of this name is seeing Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, as food. Last time, among the topics, because this is the second talk I'm giving on this name, so last time I spoke, among other things, about the huge social and cultural significance of food, just seeing how important food is to all of us in, in various ways, to, to get some angle on the meaning of why we say God is food. Some people outside Vedic culture, maybe in Abrahamic religions, would protest this, that why God is so great why are you relegating him to such an, an literally everyday thing as food? Of course, we have in the Christian tradition the idea that uh, this bread is my body and this wine is my blood. Food is non-different from Jesus. And that is <clears throat> blended into the liturgy, the, the central point of the Roman Catholic Mass is what is called Holy Communion in which they give some bread to it. Of course it's only symbolic, they don't give real bread. Uh, but you might think, well it's just too everyday, too, too mundane, it's just food, God, come on, God's much bigger and better than food. But the Vedic understanding is that everything is God. We should see God in everything, as everything, and at the same time, aloof from everything, separate from everything. Maya tatamidam sarvam jagadavyakta murtina matsthani sarva bhutani na chahang teshva vastitaha. Krishna says, Maya tatamidam sarvam, this whole universe is a representation of myself, the, un, the unmanifest form. I am in everything, still I am an aloof. I am aloof from everything. So Krishna is food, it is his mercy, and it is something that we contact daily, necessarily. So Krishna also teaches us in Bhagavad Gita in so many ways to see him represented in various phenomena that we encounter within this world. Uh, but it's, it's not untrue to say that God is food. Or rather, we should see that. So getting, we should see that. Yes, we should see that and taste it and experience it. Yeah, getting back to this point, last time I spoke about the huge social and cultural significance of food, and that, of course, is true in Vedic society also. Vedic society is different from others in that it's based on knowledge. It's not evolved out of ignorance. Rather... Vedic culture, as we see it in this world, is rather devolved, or is always devolving, from the ideal, pristine Varnashram society that Krishna has introduced. But it's based on Krishna's plan to bring us back to him, not on our own plans to avoid him. That is a major difference between Vedic culture and any other culture. So food is central in Vedic culture, uh, as Srila Prabhupada uh, many times has outlined in his writings and his speeches. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada's purport to Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 7, Text 16, composed at a time when 
Śrīla Prabhupāda himself was undergoing the pastime of ill health and was personally eating very little. But Śrīla Prabhupāda is explaining in this purport how the uh, Nanda Maharaj was giving food to brahmanas and Srila Prabhupada writes how they were, the brahmanas were given very palatable dishes and Srila Prabhupada writes, palatable dishes were generally prepared with two things, namely food grains and milk products. Bhagavad Gita therefore enjoins that human society must give protection to the cows and encourage agriculture. Krishi go raksha vanijang vaisha karmas vabhavajam. Simply by expert cooking, hundreds and thousands of palatable dishes can be prepared from agricultural produ produce and milk products. This is not an exaggeration. I've seen in my travels in this lifetime in this land of India, where the Vedic culture is going on, there's so many varieties, it's just unending uh, and, and palatable. Yes, very palatable. So Srila Prabhupada continues, this is indicated here by the words Anam Mahagunam. The word Anam, which we are discussing as the name of Vishnu, comes in this verse of Bhagavatam. And Mahaguna means a very high quality, best quality. So Srila Prabhupada continues in his purport, Still today in India from these two things, namely food, grains and milk, hundreds and thousands of varieties of food are prepared and then they are offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Chatur Vidha Sri Bhagavat Prasada. Patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhakta prayachati. Then the prasad is distributed even today in Jagannath Kshetra and other big temples. Very palatable dishes are offered to the deity and prasad is distributed profusely. Yeah, how many temples are famous for the food? Puri especially and Nathwar especially on the uh, other side of the country. Tirupati, Ladus, Balaji, very famous. <clears throat> Cooked by first class brahmanas with expert knowledge and then distributed to the public this prasad is also a blessing from the brahmanas or Vaishnavas. Yeah, we generally think of prasad, and that's the very meaning of prasad, food, as being a blessing from Krishna. But we should remember that it's also a blessing from the brahmanas or Vaishnavas who prepare it. Srila Prabhupada continues, there are four kinds of prasada, chatur vidha. Just as a side note, pretty much everyone in Mongolati, those who attend Mongolati, sing Chatur Vidha Sri Bhagavat Prasado, but it should be actually Chatur Vidha Sri Bhagavat Prasada. Look in the songbook and see how it should be pronounced. Continuing, four kinds of prasad Chatur Vidha salty, sweet, sour, and pungent tastes are made with different types of spices. So there are four flavors there. There's one more astringent. And Srila Prabhupada continues, and the food is prepared in four divisions called charvya, chushya, lehya, and paya. Food that is, or oh, prasad, prasad, Prasad that is chewed, prasad that's charvya, prasad that is licked, chusha, prasad tasted with the tongue, lehya, and prasad that is drunk, liquid. Thus, there are many varieties of prasad. Different, you see different consistencies, different flavors, and then, of course, there are mixtures 
of flavors, uh, katamita, in Hindi it said, food that is both sour and sweet, just like at this season, we get uh, chutneys and drinks made from uh, sour, unripe mangoes, which is sweetened, so we get sour and sweet. And there's so many varieties. But Srila Prabhupada here is particularly talking about, he writes, there are many varieties of prasad prepared very nicely with grains and ghee. He's making the point that these are the two. Krishi go raksha. From Krishi comes grains, agriculture, and from go raksha, cow protection, comes milk and milk products, ghee, uh, yogurt, buttermilk, and so many preparations. So these are offered to the deity and distributed to the brahmanas and Vaishnavas and then to the general public. This is the way of human society. Killing the cows and spoiling the land will not solve the problem of food. This is Srila Prabhupada. This is just in, in one short sentence. He has encapsulated whole, a whole major problem in the whole attitude of the demoniac society which is prevalent all over the world. And not only the attitude, but the activities that unwind, the activities that manifest from that attitude. The idea, well, we should kill the animals to eat them and spoil the land. That means we'll get more food if we put in chemical fertilizers and pestilence. Uh, Srila Prabhupada dictated this in the 1970s, in the meantime, 50 years later, almost 50 years later, there's widespread understanding or consciousness that spoiling the land is not a good idea at all. And the idea of not killing animals has also spread more widely than it was at that time. Srila Prabhupada says that killing the cows and spoiling the land will not solve the problem of food, this is not civilization. Uncivilized men living in the jungle and being unqualified to produce food by agriculture and cow protection may eat animal may, may eat animals, but a perfect human society advanced in knowledge must learn how to produce first class food simply by agriculture and protection of cows. So much uh, important instruction Srila Prabhupada encapsulates in this just one paragraph. He makes the point that uncivilized persons, the hunter-gatherers, they also get their food. Some aborigines, they, they find bugs, a little like maggots, and eat that. Well, that's Krishna's mercy on them, but they're not advanced in knowledge. One major factor of a society advanced in knowledge is they know how to eat. <laughs> they know how to eat, what to eat. Uh, there's a lot of difference between taking Krishna Prasad and eating for the pleasure of the tongue, which is sure to, which is sure to deteriorate into sinful activity. Just like previously, in India, vegetarianism was much more widespread we wouldn't find, for instance, in Gujarat anywhere, not publicly at least, in most of Gujarat, especially Saurashtra. We wouldn't find eggs being sold openly, meat being sold openly. But what happened is they started saying, well, onions and garlic, it's good for health. It's, previously, people wouldn't take onions and garlic. That's tamasic food. 
So once they start onions and garlic, then yeah, eggs. Yeah, it's not so bad. Not so bad. So now eggs. Yeah, first onions and garlic, then eggs. And then it's a s small little jump to eating chickens. And then from chickens, mutton. The next thing is cows. And then there's no end to it. So the importance of Food is there for everyone and in every society, but in Vaishnav society, in cultured society, we should not eat food without offering to Krishna. And minimally, we should offer it to Krishna as a ritual at least. Uh, it's very widespread in today's worldwide Vaishnav movement that they say, they just say, well, you don't have to, you can eat food, it's all right. This is wrong. According to Shastra, according to culture, you should not, if you want to call yourself a Vaishnava, you should not eat food, not offered to Krishna. That is the vow of a Vaishnava. Anna means food, but devotees don't eat indiscriminately. Devotees are not vegetarian. Per se, Srila Prabhupada used the term Krishnatarian. We only take Krishna Prasad. So I was saying that we at least ritually we should think that we must offer food to Krishna before we take it. But a much more advanced level is to see taking Prasad as part of our devotional service. One thing is, it's to maintain the body for continuing with our service, but another is to relish prasad as Krishna. Srila Prabhupada, I didn't personally see, but I've heard from those who did see, he would take prasad very meditatively. Often with his, he would be chewing with his eyes closed, relishing Anna, Krishna, in the form of food. He personally relished prasad. And he put much energy into promoting it as essential in the Krishna consciousness movement. He personally cooked in the early days of the Krishna consciousness movement he would personally cook. He taught devotees how to cook. He could have said, well, just be a vegetarian and yeah, you can just boil some potatoes, this and that, be a vegetarian. Oh, remember to offer it to Krishna. But from the very beginning, Srila Prabhupada wanted to uh, spiritualize. Oh, every, devotees' life means everything is spiritualized. Everything is connected with Krishna. So for devotees, eating, it's not just a bodily function, but starting with choosing the ingredients and then preparing them, cooking them, offering them, serving them to others, it's all a meditation on Krishna. It's all devotional service and a very important part of devotional service. Puri, Natva, Tirupati, Krishna Balaram Temple, Vrindavan, in Mayapur, the, the, the Iskon Mayapur, cooking, it's, it's a major part of the temple function, cooking for the deities. Uh, Srila Prabhupada, he brought devotees to India and he would take them to life members' houses for eating. And one major reason that he did so, we can understand, is to introduce his Western disciples to cultured people in India to see how they behave, how they organize their families, how they serve guests. And also, Srila Prabhupada was very interested not just to relish the varieties of wonderful food that they would offer to the devotees, but he would tell his disciples, especially Yamuna, uh, he would say, now you go in the kitchen and, and you learn from the women. 
how they cooked these items. They were all things which I'd never seen or heard of or imagined, all these different items. Learn how to cook. And then she was supposed to and did cook that for the deities and teach others to cook. So Srila Prabhupada wanted to bring the whole culture of the spiritual world, the Krishna consciousness movement, not this, what's the adjective, strange idea that we'll retain our, our Western lecture culture and be devotees at the same time. But Srila Prabhupada wanted to bring this Vaishnava culture to the West, a major part of which is we meditate on how to please Krishna by offering him all varieties of nice food. He is Anna, and he manifests as Anna, food, so that we have the chance to serve him in that way by offering food to him. And Srila Prabhupada wanted to bring that in and to, to bring to the world such a nice culture. You don't have to eat all these nasty things. Srila Prabhupada often said if people get such nice food, that was also a major part of his strategy in preaching worldwide, knowing that people are very much attached to this uh, taste of meat and uh, blood. Uh, Srila Prabhupada had the idea that if they get this taste, literally higher taste, that was the name of a, a, a book made for through the literary form, introducing people to the understanding of Krishna Prasad. So if they, they get a higher taste by taking Krishna Prasad, then they won't want to eat meat. Uh, that was um, said, I've recorded that in Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Vaibhava, that the Maharaj of Tripura was a great supporter of the Gorya Mat. Maharaj means he's from a Kshatriya family, and Kshatriya families generally think that they have a right to eat meat. It's just expected for Kshatriyas that they'll eat meat. But he was uh, given such a nice prasad, of course, vegetarian. I believe that was cooked by one Krishna Kesha Brahmachari. And the Maharaj of Tripura said that if I could get such nice food every day, then I would stop eating meat. And actually, the, now I'm getting off on a tangent. There's so many tangents you could go off. Actually, you could write a huge, huge book just on Srila Prabhupada and Prasadam. And unlimited books on the, the whole culture of Prasadam. <clears throat> so just one little point uh, also that uh, Janaki Nath Bosch, the father of Subhash Chandra Bosch, he, he was a prominent advocate, rich man, and <clears throat> he gave a sizable contribution every month to the Satchitananda Mat established by Bhaktisiddha and Sarasvab Thakur in Katak, ancient city, prominent city of Orisha. So Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati had daily a big tiffin carrier of Mahaprasad sent from the temple to Janaki Babu so that he wouldn't eat fish. So, Everyone likes food. We're trying to remember, we're, we're trying to change people's eating habits. It's not just by beating them on the head and telling them you'll go to hell for eating meat, which is true, but to give them a higher taste. And the varieties that Srila Prabhupada introduced, the prasad varieties from the spiritual world, they're definitely going to be more attractive to not just to the tongue but to the soul if they are the items that Krishna personally relishes the, the kind of items that Yashoda Rukmini, Radha prepare for him I'll get that back to that 
a little later. Uh, but as a beginning, just like Srila Prabhupada commenting on that, Rasoham Apsu Kaunteya, I am the taste of water. So Srila Prabhupada, he commented on that, that even if someone who is addicted to drinking wine, which is after all based on water, if they think, oh, this wine is so nice, if they think this taste is Krishna, one day they'll be a great devotee. One day, I mean, it's going to take quite some time. So the same point that if we can impress on everyone that Anna is Krishna, food is Krishna, then even Epicureans, people who are very interested in enjoying life through the senses, they can make spiritual advance and advancement by such remembrance. And in many religious cultures, I don't know how much that is followed nowadays, but there's this idea of some prayer being said before taking food. The idea of offering food as to the deity, as in Vedic culture, um, that's not there in, well, like I was saying, in the Roman Catholic Mass, it's there, but it's, it's so obscure, it's practically forgotten. But at least they have, I remember in my childhood, we had a, a ritual which my mother took very seriously, that we would say prayers to God for kindly giving us food. And then the food was, in retrospect, it was, phew, I'm really glad. It, even if nothing else, just for changing my diet, I can give my unlimited obeisances to Srila Prabhupada. Of course, I was a vegetarian. I'd made that decision before coming to the shelter of Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet, but that culture of meat-eating, oh, Krishna, Krishna. I'm so grateful Prabhupada saved me from the, that horrible Western culture. And again, I just, it, it boggles my mind how devotees in the West, they, they're actually attached to this Western culture and they think that we have to have this Western culture to preach Krishna consciousness. So, let's say something blissful. Yeah, there are many blissful pastimes, many blissful pastimes of Krishna eating, stealing the butter, eating with his cowherd boys. That whole song of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, there's a similar song ascribed to Narottam Das of Krishna eating Shukta Shakti, Shukta Shakadi Bhaji Nalita Kushmanda Dali Dalna Dugda Tumbi Dodhi Murchakanda. There's so many varieties of food which Krishna is eating. Tripta Hoye Kai Krishna Joshoda Bhavani. Krishna very happily eating in, it's actually Nanda Bhavan, it's Nanda's house, but here it said Yashoda Bhavani because this is the kitchen, it's Yashoda's area or the eating area. So Krishna with his cowherd friends and Radhika is there and all of Radhika's friends are there. So Triptohe, Krishna very satisfied, is eating in Yashoda's house. And then afterwards, Sri Krishna Prasad Radha Bunjai Hoye Prito. After Krishna is eaten, Radha, she also enjoys very happily Lolita di shoki gon oboshe shopai mone mone shuke radha krishna gunagai and then then all the gopi after krishna enjoys what the gopis have offered to him then radha enjoys krishna's remnants and then the gopis headed by lalita they enjoy what the remnants of radha and krishna and they uh, they meditate with great happiness on the uh, Mane Mane Shuke Radha Krishna Gurnagai. In their minds, 
they, they, while they're taking this prasad, they meditate or they praise the glories of Radha and Krishna. And at the end of the song, Bhakti Nautako sings that Hari Lila Matro Jahara Pramod Bhogarati Gai Shai Bhakati Vinod. Uh, that this Bhakti Vinod for whom Hari Lila, the pastimes of Krishna, Hari Lila Ek Matro Jahara Pramod, this, his only pleasure in life is the pastimes of Krishna. So uh, he sings about the Bhoga Arati. So it's so sweet, so blissful, just to hear about Krishna eating. That's all. So many pastimes he has. He's eating with the cowherd boys in the forest. Uh, <laughs> Brahma comes and steals. Uh, then the boys and the calves. Then he, Krishna becomes the boys and the calves and he enjoys sucking the breasts. He enjoys the anna, the food from the breasts of the gopis, the elder gopis, and from the cows. So many blissful pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu eating. And this is going on to the present day. <laughs> Krishna is still eating. He didn't stop eating. He shares stolen butter with the monkeys. The same monkeys that helped Bhagavan Sri Ram in finding Mata Sita, that he rewarded them next time. Here, last time you had fruit, now I'm giving you butter. So much we can say. The pastimes of Krishna in his eating, that's discussed in the next name also. Yeah, I was saying, and this goes, it's going on to the present time. It's not that it's all in the past. It's going on right now. Someone somewhere is cooking for Krishna and such relishable items. And that, the, that food is cooked with such love and that goes into the, the food and that's offered to Krishna. And then he gives it back with his saliva and that makes it taste out of this world. It's a different flavor all together. There's nothing in this world like Krishna Prasad and it's still going on. So many items are offered to Krishna. Krishna Balaram temples, so many temples. Srila Prabhupada established so many temples. Temples in homes, so many wonderful items are being offered to Krishna. So this is Vedic culture. Appreciating Krishna as Anna, and this cooking for the Lord and his devotees, we do cook for Krishna, but we also think we're preparing, we know that Krishna is going to eat and the devotees are also going to take afterwards. So it's a, a great mood of how we want to serve Krishna and the devotees uh, and putting our love into that. It's very intimate service. We talk about intimate service, intimate higher level pastimes, but we can directly engage in higher level pastimes by cooking for Krishna. Yashoda, Radha, Rukmini. In Dwaraka, there are millions of servants and plenty of gopis in Vrindavan. They're all ready to cook for him, but Yashoda, Radha, Rukmini, Satya Bhama. Can you imagine how much Krishna eats in one uh, 16,108 palaces and all his queens individually cook for him and they all have their nuances of cooking? Krishna is enjoying. He is the supreme enjoyer. We'll come to that in the next name. It's not that he needs to eat. It's not that he's hungry in the way that we are, but he's hungry for the devotional offering of his devotees, even aspiring devotees like ourselves. How many billions, trillions, zillions of goddesses of fortune are there who all prepare literally out of this world extremely tasty dishes for him, but he comes to this world and very kindly appears as the deity he appears and then 
You have to feed him. He wants you come. Come, come, cook for me. He's coming as the deity. How we can cook for him? We have to remember that he's, he's being Lakshmi Sahasrashata Sambrahma Saviyamanam. So many millions of goddesses of fortune are cooking for him. So we should go very humbly, try to get his attention to, and, and pray in the kitchen to Lakshmi. This is the kitchen... Is Krishna's kitchen. You're the proprietor here. Radha, you, you are the one who can actually please him. So please, I, I'm not even fit to be a grain of dust in your lotus feet. And what can I cook for Krishna when you are cooking for Krishna? So we have to pray to Radha in the kitchen that Please, you take charge of my hands so that, and my mind and my hands, and become an instrument so that I can offer something so nice that Krishna will salivate when he even begins to smell it and see it. He'll become eager to take it, eager to take it from our hands the mercy of the devotees, we have to pray for. To offer anna to anna requires a great amount of mercy, which we need. We have to pray for that mercy to be able to offer anna to anna. There's a meditation on anna. There's so much more to be said on this name, Krishna willing. I'll speak some more about this name in another session. Vancha kalpa tarubhya sharki paas indubhya evaja patita anam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha.